But that's okay, because what we're all concerned about, we're all thinking about, we're all maybe worried about is what happens this afternoon when Max Scherzer gets on the mound versus Max Freed uh, from the Atlanta Braves. This series that means so much for this Mets team, even if just perceptually. Uh, right now, they are still one of the best teams in Major League Baseball, one of the best records, I should say, in Major League Baseball. Uh, right now, sit 53-33. and 33. The second most wins in the National League. However, the Atlanta Braves are just a game and a half back. And I know that's making people nervous. And you know what? For the most part, uh, this season, I think when the Braves started to climb, when they went on that ridiculous streak, we all remember this about two and a half, maybe three weeks ago, maybe even a month ago, where they they just couldn't lose. I mean, they won like 14 or 15 games in a row, and it just felt like, uh uh-oh, Mets are in trouble. And we started to get a little nervous, but then the Mets kind of stabilized a little bit. They pushed themselves back up to a four and a half or five game lead, and and here we are on the precipice of a series that we want to build up, a series that we want to make the the midpoint uh, litmus test For this Mets team. Because if they fall behind the Atlanta Braves, then woe is me. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do now? Well, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter. What happens in this series is all perceptual. It all is just a a mid-season state of the union, so to speak. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the New York Mets will be in trouble if they fall behind the Atlanta Braves. And and I, I think recent history is what you have to look at. Uh, in order to prove this. Now, we see this all the time in other sports. Say, you know, the NFL or um, uh, in basketball to an extent, but 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 not really. But let's, let's talk about the NFL. You get a team that just barely figures it themselves out in time to make the postseason. They get into the postseason and, you know, sometimes they get hot. And, you know, next thing you know, they're in the NFC Championship game. And next thing you know, they're beating the best team in football history. That would be the New York Giants back in 2007 when they beat the New England Patriots. The same thing happened last year with the exact team that the Mets are playing this afternoon, the Atlanta Braves. We all remember it. Back at the All-Star break, we're just just on the cusp of the All-Star break. At the All-Star break last year, and I had to look this up because I knew they were bad. I didn't realize they were this, not bad, they they were average. And we didn't realize that they were this average. They were almost exactly average. Last year, the Atlanta Braves go into the All-Star break on July 13th. They are 44 and 45. They're not really setting the world on fire. Uh, and the, the in, as far as it pertains to the National League, it, they weren't a threat. I mean, they were they were interesting because they have some good players, and 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 Freddie Freeman is one of the best players in baseball. But they weren't a threat, so to put that in quote. They weren't a threat. But after the All Star break, they made some deadline moves that obviously changed their season. We all remember them. Eddie Rosario, Jorge Soler comes in, Jock Peterson, uh, they they bring in Adam Duvall. And before you know it, the Atlanta Braves just, just start piecing and piecemealing their way back into the conversation. They end up winning the division, and then they ultimately go on and win the championship because they got hot at the right time. Well, right now, the Atlanta Braves are hot. They are healthy. They have a shortstop in Dansby Swanson, who's maybe one of the best shortstops in baseball right now, uh, doing his thing. They they hit from everywhere. Uh, they have a pretty good pitching staff uh, as well. It's it's if you looked at it on paper. And by the way, you've heard this many times. I mean, I think we've I think we've even said this on this show. The Atlanta Braves are on paper one of the best teams in baseball. Right, multiple guys with double digit home runs. They have multiple guys that have. A high OPSs, and they and they put themselves in positions to win games consistently on a, on a nightly basis, and they're hitting on all cylinders. They started the season slow, and they've gotten healthy at the right time, and they're hot. They're hot right now, but again, it doesn't matter. the The New York Mets come into this series. They now have Starling Marte, who is down again with a, I think it's a groin injury. Uh, that's a, it's, it's, it's not troubling, but it is what it is. We know that there are going to be moves made uh, at some point in the break. We know that they're going to get Jacob DeGrom back at some point because Jacob DeGrom is now, I think the latest is he's moving up to AAA. I forget where the AAA affiliate is. That That's that's. 
Port St. Lucie, or is that no? That's that's Double A. That's I mean, Scranton. I can't remember where the Triple A affiliate is for uh, uh, Syracuse. That's right, uh, Syracuse for Jacob Degrom. So he's moving up to Triple A. His third uh, rehab start is going to be a Triple A. So it's only a matter of time before Jacob Degrom comes back and this Mets team gets full again. And we are we're 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 looking at this rotation as one of the best in baseball. And so as I think about this series, while I, in my mind I've built it up to be something so important, such a, such a, 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 a litmus test, the Mets got to find a way to, to win two out of these three games and keep this, even though it's shrinking, this lead over the Atlanta Braves in the vision. I, I need the Mets to be that team. In actuality, you don't. This doesn't mean anything. This is more to me a a gauge of what the Mets will need to do come trade deadline time. And we've talked about it uh, really this entire uh, entire season. We know that they need a bat. We know that maybe they can just reach into their minor league system and bring up Mark Vientos, who's been hitting uh, really well uh, down there. Or you can bring up Francisco Alvarez, who's uh, who's who's. Uh, obviously kind of a freak at 20 years old. And at some point, you know he's going to be a major contributor for this Mets team. Maybe you could bring him up. He's probably not ready yet, but there are options for the New York Mets. And I think this Brave series gives the Mets a chance to figure out what they need to do, what they what they have to do in order to be the best team in the division. And by the way, if they end up not being the best team in the division – that's all right as well, because when it gets to the postseason, it's a different conversation. 877-337-6666. Don't forget our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. I'm excited for this for this series. I'm excited for this game in particular uh, today with, with Scherzer and Freed going against each other. Scherzer, because I want to see another dominant performance. And more importantly, I want to test. I want to see the test of metal of this Mets, uh, these, 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 these bats, these Mets uh, position players, these guys who have been grinding their way to one of the top teams in baseball all season long. I want to see them against one of the best pitchers in Freed uh, in, 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 the, in the start of this series. Look, there's going to be emotion in this game. There's going to be import at this game. There's, you're just going to feel the energy of, of, of Mets and Braves, and I can't wait to get to it. I know you guys can't wait to get into it, but I'm telling you, it's not as important as we're making it out to be. All right, let's get to your calls here. 877-337-6666. Mike, who's down at the Jersey Shore. What's up, Mike? Welcome to the fan. Kiki, what's going on, my man? All is good, man. How are you? I mean, Tiki, let's be honest. And the fact that you're downplaying this whole is, is we sure never know that the Mets are probably going to, I mean, get swept by the Braves they're right now. They're not going to get swept. I mean, that, Come on. They're, they're not going to get swept. <laughs> You know, we all saying Jacob DeGrom is going to come back. I mean, Taiwan Walker got pitched like a gem yesterday. The Mets going to hit against the Marlins. What are they going to do against the Braves, man? Hey, hey, come on. Well, I mean, we know, we know the Braves are the better team. Come on. We all know that. Well, here's the Thanks thing. So much, Dick. The, oh, I appreciate you, Mike. The only thing I can point to is I, I feel like. And I don't want to go there because this is it, this is almost this is almost disrespectful for a team that's been really good all season long. You know, talking about the Mets, the only thing I can think about. It, because you're right, Taiwan Walker pitched fantastic. I mean, he actually had a l- better outing than uh, Sandy Alcantara. Uh, it was, I mean, he's going to win the Cy Young. But Taiwan Walker and that slider that is just filthy uh, had a had a day as well. It's just the Mets bats were silent and they were quiet. And it's all, it's kind of in my mind a, a, a catalyst to what they need to do in bringing up some of these young bats or really start aggressively thinking about what to do at the trade deadline. But I mean, in some ways, I can't help but think because I, I, I felt this. I, you know, it's weird. I felt this watching these Mets this weekend. It was almost like their minds were so pushed forward to the Atlanta Braves because for the last two weeks, three weeks. All we've been talking about, you know, they hear it. These, these guys look at social media. They, they listen to WFAN. They, they read the newspapers. All we've talked about for the last month, it feels like, is, uh-oh, here come the Braves. The Braves are right on your asses, Mets. Come on, Mets. Uh, the, here they come. And so 
finally, in your mind, you see the Braves around the corner and you overlook a team that was right in front of you in, in, in Miami. And I'm not saying that Miami Marlins you know, can't beat you because obviously uh, they, they, they can. Uh, I mean, they're not great, but they're not horrible as well. They're relative to you know average. They're just a couple of games under 500. And so the Marlins are, are, are a decent squad. They should have beat them. They should have, they should have won this series. Uh, I'm not saying that they should have won all these games, but they should have won this series. But I can understand how maybe the Met looked past them because the Braves are the team that's just looming so large in their rearview mirror. Let's get Joe, who's in Clark, New Jersey. What's happening, Joe? Welcome to the fan. What's up, Teak? How you doing today, buddy? I am good. Yourself? I, well, here's good, Teak. Here's the thing. I feel I'm a little different. I feel differently. This series is big because I feel once Atlanta passes us, and I, you know, we saw it last year. We were in, we were three games up on August second. Yep. Within a two weeks, we were five games back. They passed us, and that was it. We never got it back. I think once they pass us, that division's gone. That train left. But those were just that, different circumstances last year, Joe. Right? Like it, there, there was. What were you looking forward to last year? You know last, what I mean? Last year, last year I just wanted to make the playoffs. Now this year, look, I, TK, I'm sorry. We we were in first place again last year for three and a half months. This year for two and a half months. I, I want to win this division, man. I don't want to have to play that wild card because then you got to worry. It's three games. Yes. They're all at the They're all either they're either at your park or the other team's park. That's right. Whoever has the better the better record. And I want to have that buy, man. I mean, like this is this series support. Look, I know. Look, McNeil's not playing. Marte's probably not playing tonight. So it's gonna we're gonna be compromised. I mean, let's be honest. We don't hit it as it is. We don't hit as it is, and that's and we talked about this TV Friday. We talked. Yep. We know they need. They, we know they need two bats. At least the DAs. We want you know Josh Bell, Nelson Cruz. Here's another thing, TK, I, I'm thinking about. I think at this point, they need to change this lineup a little bit. I want to see McNeil batting second. I want to see Lindor, I want to see Lindor batting fifth, believe it or not, and have Marte bat third. Marte, to me, may be their best hitter. Yeah. If you look power yeah. and average. And have Alonzo Ford have Lindor fifth. McNeil up batting fifth, to me, you know, he's not a pa- he's, he's a slap hitter. He's a singles guy. He gets on base. I'd like to see him. I'd like to see Nimmo, McNeil, Marte, uh, uh, Alonzo, Lindor. I think that's our best five. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, can, I can understand putting McNeil in a position where the bats can drive him in as opposed to the other way around because you know he's going to get a hit, or at least you assume that he's going to get a hit given how he hits for average. I hear you on that lineup. And maybe that, maybe that is what, you know, what, what happens this week is that the Mets, with some injury issues and some real decisions to make, before the trade deadline, again, whether to bring up the young kids or whether to make some big moves. And when- I think I think they need to do both. I think Vientos needs to be brought up. I think we we've seen enough. Of, we've seen enough of that. You know, look, Escobar, he is what he is. He's going to play. Unfortunately, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah. But the DH yeah. position. I mean, now with now with McCann going down, bringing up the Zika. Who? Come on, let's be honest. He, he's horrible. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, and Nito doesn't hit at all. Nito has no home runs, ten RBIs. I mean, you'll see in this series, Tiki. They got Darno and they got Contreras. They have like twenty six home runs from their catcher. It's That's right. Ridiculous. That's right. That's it's right. And you can- we have one. <laughs> yeah, and, and you can't. Well, here's the, here's the thing. And appreciate your call, Joe. Uh, thanks for calling back, man. Hope you had a great weekend. But here's the thing: when I think about this Mets team, I I want to see this these next three games as a pure litmus test. And maybe that's a defeatist mentality. I, you know, it probably is. I, you know, I'm going to come out on a limb. It is a defeatist mentality because I if this was two months ago, not even if this was a month ago, I'm saying the New York Mets are fine in my mind. The New York Mets are finding a way to win this series against the Atlanta Braves. I just know they are because we've seen them do it. We know what they what their medal is made up. We know they got to skip and Buck Walter, who has a has the pulse of this team and can I don't want to use the cliche of motivating them, but I will use they motivating these guys to you know find the little ways to win. That's what I would have been saying a month ago. But now I'm saying a Mets team that's that's compromised that has some injury issues, that is in a little bit of a slump, especially some of the big guys uh, that you've been counting on, even Pete Alonzo. Like, when, when, when you're hitting this series against the Braves and you're not playing at your best, it's easy to be defeatist and say, well, it doesn't matter. It's just going to tell us what's going on. But at the same time, I think that's exactly what this Mets team needs. If they're going to come into this series and the, the Braves are wiping the floor with them, it will open Mets uh, Brass's eyes so wide about what maybe fans and media have been talking about for a long time. You got to do something. You got to. You, you can't just sit and let it happen to you. You have to make it happen to yourself. Let's get Paul up in Westchester. What's happening, Paul? Welcome to the fan. Hey, how's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? So, good. Couple of things. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, 
52 year Met fan, so I'm a little skeptical because I've seen this before. And again, I do. It's see a different this. regime, it's man. A little... It's a different regime, right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I've lived through 52 years. There've been different regimes. But here's the thing: I, I a couple of things. First of all, I, Showalter is supposedly a brilliant manager, and I'm sure he is. But I don't understand his adherence to keeping Escobar in the line. He'll sit McNeil. He will sit Guillermo. Yeah. I mean, why not consider Kahana as a DH possibly instead of instead of Smith or Davis, and then have Guillermo third. McNeil at second, or McNeil in in, um, in left, in left yeah. um, and and then have Kahana as possibly a DH, uh, and then you know possibly sit Escobar. You got three automatic outs at the end of that lineup. Yeah, I mean, I that's, mean three. What? It, the, the challenge with putting Connor at the DH is it is his OPS is it's 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 sub eight hundred. Like you can't, you're not. He's not guaranteed to give you what a DH needs to give you. To, to no, give you. but he's but, but then again, I, I, fine. I, I'm not saying he is. Yeah, but yeah. Let's look at what we've got right now. It's, it's it's right now. It's what's the lesser of two evils. And then <laughs> you consider the fact that in, you know the thing about Escobar that drives you nuts is not only does he hit, he doesn't even. Again, back to Lindor, that guy had a great comment about his lack of knowledge of the strike zone. <laughs> this guy's swinging at pitches that aren't even remotely close. Yeah. And when you all you need to do is touch the ball, I, I, the great thing about that whole Keith Hernandez uh, the, uh, ceremony was that is what they are severely locking, lacking. Ed Lynch said if he missed a bunt, uh, that Hernandez would be at the dugout saying, you know, we could lose a game like that because yeah. you didn't put the ball in play. Yeah, you're right. And fundamental, something like, fundamental. And again, like Escobar, how many times has he just left the guy at third where he couldn't even touch the ball? Yeah. And that is so frustrating. It is frustrating. They, they still lock a lot. It, and I, I think that their offense may not – I don't really think their offense is going to carry them well, unless they do something. Well, we know, and appreciate your call, Paul, we know that their offense isn't carrying them right now. That That's why a move needs to be made. Their offense just – it can't. Uh, if Pete Alonso is is having this this an, a, an unbelievable MVP type season, uh, maybe he's maybe he's the the engine that can push this offense to carry them. And and Lindor, you know, right on his back with sixty RBIs at this point, maybe maybe a little bit. But we know that this isn't about their offense. It's about their pitching staffs. It's about playing great defense, and it's about manufacturing runs by playing smart baseball, not running into outs and things of that nature. That That's how this Mets team is going to win until and unless they do something at the deadline and bring in a bat and bring in someone who just scares the crap out of opposing pitchers. They don't have that right now. And maybe there's one or two in the, in the farm system, but they don't have it right now, which is why this series against the Atlanta Braves has to be looked at as a eye-opener to what the Mets actually need to do. Now, we talked about this briefly because a, a caller mentioned it, but Keith Hernandez's number was retired uh, this over the weekend. It was an awesome ceremony. I think the, the legends that were back – uh, made it made it really interesting. Keith was awesome. You know, the first pitch from first base to his brother. I mean, that, dude, that's just that's amazing. I didn't even play baseball, and I still remember having a catch uh, with my brother. And so to be able to do something like that on that day was was just magical. But it makes me ask the question, and I'll ask all of you guys who call after this: Who's the next number to be retired for the New York Mets? David Wright, Docs, Daryl, Carlos Beltran? <laughs> huh. That was Hoff's suggestion. We'll get your answers to those questions coming up next year. Tiki Barber for Tiki and Tierney on WFAN. 